Commander, all hell's broken loose. Nod's launched preemptive strikes in every major blue zone across the board. Most of our troops are pinned down. Our ASAT defense system is still offline, and I have no goddamn idea who's running the show at GDI. Kiersey James and Theater Ops will bring you up to speed. It's all on you now, Commander. I need you to take back this city. Real-time strategy is one of those genres that's enjoyed a rich history in computer gaming. And perhaps no RTS series has a richer history than Command & Conquer. It's been 12 years and close to a dozen games and expansions since the original CNC, yet the series is showing no sign of jumping any sharks. The newest addition to EA's sci-fi extravaganza is Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars, and it compares well to any of its forebears. Move in on them. What would a Command & Conquer game be without an epic storyline of sci-fi heroes, treacherous villains, alien invasion, and world domination? Don't answer that. Instead, gaze and be amazed at the return of full motion video. That's right, you thought it died in the 90s, but CNC3 features the star-powered mugs of Billy D. Williams, Trisha Helfer. Now, despite rumors of Kane's death, the Brotherhood remains stronger than ever. Our commitment to Tiberium undying. And with your help, we will continue to spread the gospel of the great green crystal. Josh Holloway. Now make sure you knock out the communications first so they can't call for backup. Then go stealth and do that nasty thing you do. Wish I could tell you what Kane's got planned, but then I'd have to kill you. And of course, Joe Kukin reprising his role as the infamous Kane. I have seen that GDI is vulnerable, bloated by arrogance and complacency. Now is the time to strike. While they congratulate themselves on Tiberium advancements, Nod made decades ago, we will expose their weaknesses for all the world to see. All of these actors and more are laying on the cheese for your viewing pleasure. And while sometimes it gets a little thick, most of the time the FMV is so bad, it's good. The are up in the Philadelphia at that damn energy summit. And I'm God sorry knows to interrupt, General. I've just been informed. There's been an attack on Goddard Space Center in Maryland. We should be receiving visual data any second. Good Lord. Do you realize what they've done? Tiberium Wars takes place in 2047, about 16 years from the time the last CNC left off. Since then, the world has been divided into three areas. Blue zones are clear of the toxic substance known as Tiberium and are protected by the Global Defense Initiative, or GDI. Yellow zones are partially infested with the stuff and controlled largely by the evil Brotherhood of Nod. Red zones are completely covered in Tiberium and are totally unlivable. At the outset, GDI's headquarters, the space station Philadelphia, is suddenly struck by a Nod nuke, hurling the world into the Third Tiberium War. Eventually, GDI recovers from the blow, nearly bringing Nod to its knees, only to be interrupted by the arrival of an alien race known as the Skrin. From there, it's a desperate three-way war for the fate of the planet. Yeah, it's been done a million times, but hey, watching Lando Calrissian bark orders at lowly privates never gets old. No, General, I'm not suggesting it. I'm ordering it. Like its predecessors, Tiberium Wars follows a pretty straightforward structure. You've got your two single-player campaigns, one for each of the two main playable factions, GDI and Nod, and a mini-campaign for the Skrin. Each of the two main campaigns consists of about 15 individual missions, which should be plenty of meat, except these missions tend to fall into one of a few basic categories. You either attack key targets with a large force, defend critical locations with a small force, or build up a base and use it to annihilate the enemy. There are some clever attempts to change it up, but compared to some other RTS games, the missions are pretty standard. But let's be honest, RTS is less about what you do in mission than how you do it, and CNC3 provides excellent balance and scads of entertainment across the board. All three factions have their own playstyles, units, and unique special abilities. GDI, for example, focuses on slower, stronger units like the Mammoth Tank, while Nod features a lot of quickly prodded fodder designed for wave attacks. The Skrin, for their part, emphasize high-tech weapon systems, such as this Annihilator tripod. All sides require combined arms to be successful, as every unit has another unit that it's weak against. Infantry gets squished by tanks, tanks get perforated by air units, 
and air units suddenly find gravity when confronted with sand. One thing you'll notice about CNC3, especially in multiplayer matches, is the relentless pacing. Micromanagement is minimized in this design as Tiberium Wars rewards those with quick reflexes and dexterous hotkey skills. Also, CNC3 is structured in a way that de-emphasizes resource management and on-the-fly choices about what units to use. As a result, the same tactical philosophy you used in the very first CNC still works. Build a lot of your high-level stuff and rush. As a result, the game may not appeal to fans of slower-paced management-heavy strategy games like Company of Heroes. On the other hand, it's a great chance for those of you used to waving around plasma rifles to give the world of real-time strategy a try. Attack is a go. Commencing attack. Tiberium Wars comes with a built-in online matching service that, theoretically, should make it easy to find and play multiplayer games. Unfortunately, it's plagued by technical issues. This is a real shame, since multiplayer CNC is an incredibly satisfying total package when it works. To highlight its focus on multiplayer, EA has included the ability to record, rebroadcast, and even commentate on these matches, which, let's face it, is asking a lot from players. Is anyone really dying to hear a 16-year-old do his best Chris Berman impression over a GDI tank rush? ABC, what's the plan? Closing in. Offering slick, fast-paced gameplay, white-knuckle multiplayer, a lengthy single-player experience, and more B-movie cheese than a plate of microwave nachos. I hope you're as good as they say you are, Commander. Because we're throwing you right in the frying pan. Check it out. There's a lot to like about Command & Conquer 3. We're not so sure the full motion video is a great idea, and the multiplayer matchmaking will hopefully be patched soon. But overall, Tiberium Wars is an excellent choice for both vets and rookies of the genre. Nice work, Commander. The radar is back online. Just in the nick of time, too, I'm seeing massive troopers that's coming from the west. I'm sending you the coordinates. 